كسر المحل هذا بدأ Hey guys, John here and Brian. Vapor Owning Technologies. Today we are in our showroom slash lab and uh, we're going to be showing off some vapor honing and some hydroblast parts washing um, on some, I think these are rocker covers. Yep. Right? For these are actually off of a 1972 Triumph. Bonneville. So what we're going to show first is we've, we've had the hydroblast heated up today. It's been heating all day. So if those of you don't know anything about the hydroblast, um, you're going to love this. Um, Ryan, tell them what that hydroblast is going to do for us with these parts. Yeah, so specifically with these parts, as you can see, it's got a little bit of grease, or not grease, excuse me, oil on the inside. And the hydroblast blasts at around 1700 PSI. It's strictly water with a little bit of detergent in there just to aid in the cleaning of it. But it's going to remove all of that as well as some of this surface level contaminant. Now, it's not going to do as good of a job as a vapor blaster because it doesn't have abrasive, but just to strip this part down with just water before we put it in our vapor blaster, it's gonna do an excellent job. And I love it for post-process cleaning too. So not just cleaning the grease and the oil off the parts, but actually taking the abrasive out of the part. Um, a lot of people have issues with cleaning parts after the blasting process. That's what we've seen in the past. Absolutely. Um, it's still a huge issue. It's very common. You use abrasive mixed with water and it's gonna be trapped somewhere in those parts. So. Hydroblast is great for removing abrasive from parts. And I'll tell you, we rebuilt a uh, 50 over here last week and we've been doing all these engine parts and there's nothing better than using the Hydroblast as like a post-process cleaning um, because it's a peace of mind thing, right? Absolutely. Um, you know, getting all the bolt holes, tapped holes, um, anything that a blind hole, like on these engine cases you can see here, like getting all that stuff clean is super important before you do reassembly um, because you can ruin engines. Yeah, and something else you said about <clears> peace <throat> of mind, kind of what you were mentioning about blind holes, that's what makes the hydroblast so awesome is because it has so much pressure, you don't necessarily have to even see the hole, it's still going to hit it because it's gonna be able to follow the contours of the part at that high pressure and then remove all of that abrasive yeah so it works excellently in those blind areas that you can't see kind of like what you said well back in the day when i started doing all this uh, which has been what 11 years now boy i'm getting old um the the thing back in the day i didn't i didn't have a great process to clean parts after vapor hauling there just wasn't a good way but 1700 psi with a little bit of cleaning agent a lot of water heated at 115 degrees there's nothing better um, than cleaning these parts and getting that peace of mind. I mean, there's absolutely going to be no abrasive left behind if you hydroblast that part afterwards. Absolutely. And hit every little nook and cranny and every hole. There's no way that abrasive is going to be left behind. And something cool, actually, <clears throat> that you mentioned earlier is because the hydroblast is heated, whenever you're blowing those parts off, it actually removes that water faster. Yes. Because the water is heated. Um, so when you're drying that part off, it will, it will come off faster and you're not left with water spots like you yeah. might be with vapor honing itself. Yeah. There's a cylinder head um, I can show you. Can you grab it? Yeah, go grab that guy. Last night I processed this part and so I vapor honed it, then I cleaned it in the hydroblast. Normally this would take a few minutes to dry off. Because the water is normally ambient or cool, cooler water that we're blasting with and rinsing with, it takes a minute to dry this part off. I had it 90% dry before I pulled it out of the hydroblast because it has the blow off nozzle in the cabinet. Literally, it, a couple more seconds and this part was dry. And that's not normal. You no. know that. It, in a vapor on, it takes you minutes, minutes to try to this stand part. there and blow every little piece yeah. off. And the worst part is, is when you think you've got it dry and you flip it and it runs back out the other side and you have to go right. back and re-hit it. Exactly. Especially with something like this, the water, you're chasing the water. Exactly. But not when it's hot. Right. This part came out hot. But you can see the difference here. I mean, this is Triumph part versus a Honda part. But... I mean, you're gonna see that this part comes out amazing. There's no other process in the world that you could do this. No other process. Without painting it, that's it. Right. So let's get to it. Let's, let's hydroblast. Nice and steamy in there. Actually yeah, feels so really good. Like warm. <laughs> we're at a hundred and, we're at 113 degrees. So the amazing thing about this, if you can come over here and show this off, we have a timer and a temperature readout so we can see what the temperature is in real time and we have a timer. So when this machine times out, it's not gonna sit there and heat and heat and heat anymore. 
And this is good if you forget to turn it off at the end of the day. So if you're, you know, you're leaving your shop and you forget, well, the heater's gonna turn off. The light's gonna stay on, but that's it, no heat. So this turns the heater on um, and I love it. It's super simple. Like I said, I turned this machine on this morning and every time I come by it, I just max the timer out again. Right. So that it just stays on. Try it out, give it a run. Let's see, let's see how quickly it cleans. Also, this thing does have an adjustable tip. That way you guys can tune it to your likings and you're not damaging your parts. Oh, that's so warm. That feels good. What I'm noticing is a lot of people, Sorry, I'm when they use the hydroblast, they compare it to the vapor hone, meaning they take their time like washing and blasting the part, when in reality, this thing has so much pressure in the heat and the cleaner, when you wipe across a part, it's clean. It's so fat, like you can literally just sit there and wave the wand over it and it's done. Versus like, I was seeing Ryan, and it's not the first time he's used it either but he's very meticulous as if he's blast, like vapor blasting the part, right? It's hard to break habits. Yeah, <laughs> and then he's drying it, he's taking his time, but the part was dry the first 20 seconds that he hit the part with air. You could see it, literally the water just evaporated away. This thing is clean, there's no oil, there's no grease in here. Um, it's ready to be put in the vapor home and come out, it's come out looking brand new. You can tell this is cleaner compared to this. I mean, there's oily residue in here. This one wasn't oily like this one was, but it's still, it's still greasy and oily compared to that. But again, it's a parts washer. It's not, it's not a surface finishing changer. Like we're not trying to change the aesthetics of the part. We're just trying to clean the part. Now we're gonna change the finish of the part. So that's many, many years of corrosion and we're gonna clean it all up. Yeah, and this piece is gonna look excellent just because it is that cast aluminum. All right guys, to actually blast these parts, we're gonna use our VH1000 HD, and we're gonna use a 170 to 325 glass bead, and it's gonna make this thing look awesome. The 1000 HD is the industrial version of all the many different products we build. We build all of our products, or most of all of our products in an HD version, if you guys want that, which is our custom built in-house pump. Um, this machine has quarter inch steel in the bottom and uh, yeah, the, the, the pump area, uh, pump hoppers, quarter inch stainless. Um, so it's very thick, very industrial, very overbuilt, but it's gonna last forever. And that's why people love these cabinets. Um, this was one of the very first few we ever built. Everybody loves it. The pump output pressure is awesome. The reliability is awesome. Uh, it's just, it's an overbuilt tank. Um, I think this machine's seven or 800 pounds. That's how much it weighs. That's empty without water and abrasive. So Yeah, and the pump, pump pressure statement yeah. is an understatement. Pump pressure's way better, way different, more powerful, you know, more agitation, more mixing. It, it, it delivers more GPM to the gun than any other pumping system we use. So it is what it is. I mean, that's why we charge for it. It's worth every penny, honestly, even though it is overbuilt, this machine is worth every penny. So if you want to make an investment forever, that's, that's it. That's the machine. And again, we build them in all different sizes. So we can do it in the 3,500, the 4,000, whatever machine you want the HD in, we can do that. And this one has actually been the workhorse, workhorse in our showroom for years now. Yeah. Because I can remember putting this one in and it gets constant use every day. Every day. And we haven't had any issues out of it so far. Yep. So. Okay, I just wanna go ahead and show the difference. I've only touched this left-hand side here. You guys can already see how much corrosion this thing has already removed. That's amazing. Because it's only been, what, 30 seconds? 30 seconds. I've actually been blasting that. Mm -hmm. And it's already starting to look great. And then when we're finished with this part, we're gonna turn the pressure down and just allow the abrasive to, to roll over it. And that's gonna brighten up this finish even more. So this thing's gonna look immaculate when we're finished.
Holy smokes. Is that not I insane? swear you took that out and painted it. I did not. That's insane. I'm too I, clean. I've been doing this for 11 years and this never gets old. No. Huh. To go from that to that. Especially in as little time as it took. I mean, yeah. it, literally I blasted that for what, a minute? Maybe two? It wasn't long. I mean, it really is easy. I know the biggest fear in the world, what people are afraid that it's gonna damage ceiling surfaces. Right. They're afraid it's gonna damage threaded holes or threads. Because traditionally speaking, in the dry world, I mean, you could damage threads, you could damage internal threaded holes. Um, it creates what they call hard packing, which packs in the holes. It essentially mechanically locks the abrasive in there. Um, also, the fact that it gets into tight spaces, right? I think we've said before, where water can flow, we're, we're able to clean Correct. that part. And actually, if you look on the inside of this one, when I was blasting it, back in behind there, there's corrosion on this part. And you can see it, but I was actually able to clean it. And we'll, we'll get better close-ups so that you guys can actually see. With your standard dry blast, you would struggle to get in those areas. And, you know, I think we've harped so many times wet versus dry. Let's just, you know, clarify here. Everything has its purpose, but with this specific application, there's no better purpose for wet blasting than restoring parts. And it, it doesn't have to be restoring, you know? I mean, how many applications in the world, like people are prepping for coatings, they're deburring machine parts, they're, you know, they're finishing machine parts, they're using a robot to clean aerospace, you know, turbine engine parts, what have you. There's a million different things. We were actually talking about this earlier, right? Yeah. About the lineage of the company and all the things that we've been doing and... Right, because I said, changed. I was like, John, if you could go back in time and tell yourself 10 years ago, when you started with just doing motorcycle parts, that you're going to be blasting metal 3D printed parts, like you mentioned earlier, the aerospace stuff, like, what would your reaction have been? Yeah, it was hard to believe back then, you know, it was. We started, I think I told Ryan earlier, we started doing some, some industrial stuff back in the day when I started, um, and then things just kept progressing as time went on, and lo and behold, now we get to do a few motorcycle parts or engine parts, and we have a good time with it because that's not what we do a lot of now. It's working on industrial processes for other companies, um, which is also great and fun. But it was funny back in the day, shooting videos and all these simplistic um, restoration examples, people were like, do you ever do anything else other than motorcycle parts? <laughs> and I was like, unfortunately, that's all we can show you yeah. because of all the non-disclosures that we signed, non-disclosure agreements. So, But I love this. This is amazing. It looks brand new. But this truly is the most versatile cleaning, prepping, whatever process you need in the world because of how gentle it is on the surface and yet it provides such amazing results just like this. Yep, repeatable. And by the time we're finished with all these parts that we're doing for this customer, like they're all gonna look brand new. Thanks for watching guys. If you have questions, call or email the sales team. They're always here happy to help. Um, you could call me and Ryan, but we don't have enough time in the day, so. No offense. Put the comments below if you have a comment on something you want to see us show off and process. That's what we're here for. If you want to see a specific machine work, Ryan and I are always here and happy to help. Absolutely. As always, thanks for watching.